Hey everybody, Preston Brent here with our Trader User Group of Weekly Roundup. This is for the interesting trading week ending August 7th, 2015. What I've got on the screen here is the weekly chart of the E-mini S&P 500 futures. And you can see I'm going to show the same thing I showed last week. And I was talking about this last week as well. Um, I've created a uh, Fibonacci uh, retracement going back to the lows made on um, March 6, 2009. And you can see the highs made in the E-mini S&P 500 futures at 2134. Um, and then, of course, you can see each of the individual years as they're set up here like this, okay? Uh, and as I divide the years up, you can just kind of see... Uh, how we've been, this is for 2011, this is for 2012, uh, 13, 14, and now, of course, here's uh, 2015 right here. You can see outside of 2011, um, 2011 here, where we had a fairly, we spent a good part of the year going down. Ever since then, you know, we've just done nothing but go up. 12 was an up year. Uh, 13 was very aggressive, 14 was very aggressive, um, and now as we go into 15, we're in this very tight band right here. Um, and outside of what we did back in January, you're going to see that there's two key levels for 2015. One is this level right here, which is where we've been in for the bulk of the year. That's about this part right here. If I were to kind of color it in like this, you can see that that is where we've been sitting uh, for the bulk of the year. And then going into January, um, we kind of came down just a little bit, but we've stair-stepped up. So we've got two major hurdles, and we're going to jump into the daily chart here and look at it in just a second. But two major key pivot points that are holding us up. Now, I've been talking about this for quite some time, um, and you can look at 2015 as, as a year where we could be having a topping action. And you can see now I've labeled some key Fibonacci uh, uh, retracement points. Obviously, the first natural Fib node would be the 38.2% at 1575. But I also have a favorite one that I like to use, which um, although it's not an official Fib node, it's one that I find very bullish markets tend to find very often. And this is at the 0.236 level. That would put us right at about, it says 1789, so let's just call it 1790 just for, you know, just to round these things off. So that would be a, a normal pullback level in a very aggressive market. Um, and obviously, I don't think we're going to pull straight back to there. In fact, I don't even know if we will go that far. But, you know, a, a movement, something like this, where we're, uh, it takes its time, and then we end up down there would be very logical to me. And in fact, it would not negate this up move. It would be just a logical pullback here over a period of time. We gather our strength, and then we just bounce up higher. Um, or it could be a little bit more aggressive, and we come down to this natural fib node here at 1575. Okay, remember, we had a 10% pullback last October, but right at 10%, okay? And, you know, from the 2134 level uh, up at this area right here, if we pull back uh, here, that's roughly about 300, and, let's call it 345 points off the 2134 level. You know, that puts us right at about a 16% pullback. And again, I would not be surprised if when the Fed start to raise their rates, um, the markets realize that they probably overextended from a valuation perspective. Pick a reason. It doesn't really matter. I could see the markets pulling back anywhere from 10 to 15 percent or 16 percent in this case to hit that level fairly easily. OK, um, you can also see this long uh, um, divergence in the MACD as we've been making highs starting back here in 2013, 2014, and now in 2015. So really starting back in the early summers of 2013 on this weekly chart as we've been going higher uh, to where we are now, um, <clears throat> we've been making these bearish divergences. And then eventually now you can see here um, the MACD is slowly sitting right on the zero line. It dipped below uh, right here 
uh, just briefly but it looks like both the signal line and the trigger line here may go below zero here with any more down movement um, so we've got to watch this market very closely um, because it's it's as I've been saying uh, it's just it's it's indicating more of a topping action than anything else now again this is a weekly chart so each bar represents five trading days if I bring it down to a daily time frame um, and let's just spread it out a little bit so that I can cl include just the year 2015 I'm going to show you those uh, two levels again that I was talking about before those two key major pivot levels uh, this is the first one right here and it comes right down to roughly about 2032 okay that's the first level that we've spent a good part of our time in in fact the bulk of 2015 right here this is the level um, anywhere from 2134 on this blue line down to this line I just draw here and you can see it's a valid line we've touched it many many times we spent almost a week at it there uh, that's one that's two that's three four five six that's, that's seven right there total touches um, and so we've we've touched this seven times the definition of a, of a support or resistance level is at least two touches but we've got seven so that's the first level for 2015 the second level is if I were to draw a divider between 2014 and 2015 right here you can see this second level right in this area here it's a little bit of a zone area right here like that okay um, and if I were to extend that all the way over like this you know and just kind of carry it over and just call it a zone instead of a specific price point right there it's around 1970 roughly in this area right here okay so this would be the line of last resort before we go much much lower okay so these are the two key pivot levels that's one and that's two as, as I tell our group this is our s1 level our first level of support and this is our s2 level uh, going out as we look at 2015 so um, the past three days the markets have ended on a on a um, on an uptick the markets have moved up in the last 30 minutes to 45 minutes of each trading day and really um, you know the markets haven't just really closed down and just kept right on going down where you just kind of like just keep hitting the way even when it's down the markets bounce up a little bit so where are we sitting going into next week well again remember these key levels here 2032 and about 1970 roughly these are key levels for 2015 okay now I also want you to note that we're below the 50 EMA uh, sitting right here that red line on the uh, daily chart and we're sitting just above this yellow line which is the 200 EMA okay now we went below the 200 EMA here when we came down and touched this um, support point but we were only down there for two days and we moved back up intraday we moved down and touched it a couple of times but basically closing below the 200 EMA we've only done it maybe uh, twice in the entire 2015 year wasn't until that big down move in October uh, last year in 2014 did we really uh, go down if we break this key level here around 1970 we're going to challenge the October lows and if you don't remember volatility shot up to the 40s uh, back then right now vol um, pull back just a little bit and actually close down a little bit for the day even after the, the the big down move volatility actually closed down just a little bit so um, we're way away from the 40s as far as volatility concerned but if we take out that pivot there vol is going to spike hard and fast and we're going to fall very quickly and then that's when it's going to get a little bit ugly okay this is more of an orderly pullback it is not a one of those kind of pullbacks that would tend to simulate um, capitulation it's just a nice slow steady pullback and in many cases that's probably worse than better because by that I mean before you know it we could be down here or we could be down here challenging this key level and then a little bit of a bounce up boom we break that key level 
and we're down below it and then we're challenging this key level right down here with a, a little bit of something like that and then we just continue this channel straight down like that so we got to watch this very closely watch those key those key levels that I told you now this is for a daily chart this isn't for you day traders out there folks just trading a couple of days and looking for a pop okay <clears throat> now if I were to put my indicators on this chart you'd see what I mean now it gets very busy but these are the key indicators that we use uh, in our group and you can see um, I've got a couple of things on here that are that are key here you can see this blue line that was the opening price of the e-mini S&P 500 futures for the year this is an area where the markets tend to hang up um, and you can see also 2069 that was a key level we were watching for today we came below it but we closed right up above it the prior it was the it actually the prior day low Thursday hit that 2069 and you can see that's kind of what held us up and then we moved right back up there again so before if we take out 2069 we're going to come down and we're going to probably sit on 2055 very quickly which is also by the way where the 200 EMA sits you can see this longer wide down sloping channel like this right and when we get towards the top of the channel buy or sellers step in when we get down to the bottom of the channel buyers step in okay but even be that as it may it's still taking us in that orderly fashion to the downside um, if we break the um, I think what could turn it from an orderly down move to a dramatic down move would be taking out this interim key pivot as I said right here which is 2032 okay um, then we do that then we're going to go down as I said uh, very quickly and we're probably going to challenge the lows for the year uh, uh, we're going to challenge the 1970 area as I as I pointed out earlier and we break that 1970 area and then we're going to come down and come very close to challenging the um, October lows made in 2014 which if you'll happen to notice is very close to our Fibonacci that first Fibonacci level so folks I'm painting you a picture where we can end up down there in in either an orderly fashion um, I believe if we break 1970 which is the low for 2015 for the e-minis it'll be a disorderly fashion and we'll get some kind of capitulation move much like we got over here you can see that huge bat I mean literally uh, we went from 1970 right we went from the 1970 area and we just fell off the table and we came down to right at about 1800 uh, in a very very quick period of time you know it's 170 e-mini handles uh, and we did it in just a couple of weeks that's how fast this thing can move uh, and I've seen the e-minis move even faster in that more than 50 handles in a day 70 handles I mean it can get ugly so don't think we can't get down here very quick we can and that would give us a potential capitulation type of move like that <clears throat> So this is the E-minis. These are some of the key levels that I'm looking for. Now, <clears throat> the other one that really suffered some damage this week, notice we're still above the opening price of the year. So we're still in the green for the S&P 500 futures, the 2055, of course, anything north of that, we're still in the green, but just barely. If we look at the Dow, it's been, it's been weak for quite some time. Um, and let me just pull it up on the screen here you can see all the indicators on the Dow you can see with the Dow this blue line is the opening price for the year you can see we're well below that we're in const again in this orderly pullback on this channel right here you know we got a, a high a lower high and low and lower low and lower low so buyers seem to step in pushing the price up uh, when we hit the lows and sellers seem to step in pushing the price down when we you know when we do this thing but we're well south of the opening price of the year for the Dow futures okay this would indicate to me we may get a little bit of a bounce come Monday but we've got a a, a real interesting thing that looks like it's getting ready to set up we got the 50 EMA with a downward vector that's pretty steep a 200 EMA that's starting to get that downward vector 
and this could indicate sometime in the next week and a half if we stay weak we're going to get a 5200 EMA cross it's called a death cross it's more of a technical condition than anything else but a lot of market maker a, a lot of uh, hedge funds black box systems and other technical analysts follow that and that will guaranteed be on all the TV talking head points and so forth and that'll make people rush for the exits and it could accelerate selling in my experience when you have a 50 cross the 200 generally what you have is a counter trend rally because by the time those two cross it means you've been in a downward uh, trek for a while you'll have a counter trend rally back up to that cross area and then it'll roll back over again so that could put us back up towards the top here and then a roll back down so again both the E-mini S&P 500 and the Dow do not look good, but the Dow is below the um, uh, the uh, uh, opening price for the year. So we're in the red. One that really had an interesting day is the Russell Futures. If you look at the Russell Futures, I mean, <laughs> look at this, folks. Um, again, we're in this lower high, lower low environment. We're moving down. This is small and mid cap. Money was coming out of that too. Clearly, this was a distribution day. Um, and what's interesting about this is that if you look at where the, the futures closed, it closed at 1202.10. We are now in the red year to date for the Russell futures. We are about 1.1.1.80. Um, really amazing here so that's kind of where we're sitting uh, on the Russell futures um, really just not looking good at all for the Russell futures uh, sitting right on the opening price here so um, we're in the red for the Russell futures so we're in the red for the Dow we're in the red for the Russell futures um, the the e-mini S&P 500 is is just barely a few points above the opening price for the year the only one that was strong that I told everybody to watch for was NASDAQ if we look at NASDAQ you can see here um, it finally it, it it's trying to close below the 50 EMA but NASDAQ is holding up you can see this blue line here this is a NASDAQ 100 futures 4240.25 so the we're, we're well north of the opening price Nasdaq is the strongest index for the year uh, it gave up this area here but I said the 50 EMA if it holds that would be a good thing intraday we went below it but so far it's still holding even right here if it gives it up and these two little minor support points give it up we're gonna come down to the lower part of this channel here which is a key support area which also we've got the 200 EMA we got this the bottom part of the upsloping channel uh, key price level so it's we have a, 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 a congruence here of many different support levels sitting around 4340 um, and that would still keep it north of the opening price for the year fairly uh, you know number of points away from it okay so NASDAQ is still holding up but as I told our members if NASDAQ gives it up which is like one of the few holdouts then all the other markets you know it's, it's not going to be good for any of the markets just understand that and I did talk about the past couple of weeks to our members I think I talked about this last week in our weekly roundup that the markets the, the, there's limited breadth under the market less and less percentage of stocks are over their 20 and 50 EMA we've been getting bearish divergence on that signal versus how the markets are flowing so we just need to be very careful with this okay so these are the primary markets the other thing that's put in a scare in the markets is how bonds is reacting bonds has been um, uh, US bond the long end almost up two points today look at this um, the bonds are up off the bottom here from the prior top coming up to this 159.15 area I mean bonds today closed at 158.22 uh, and we're close to uh, I would call it the capitulation in Fibonacci which would be the 618 area if we take that out then you know all bets are off uh, with bonds I do believe bonds are overextended I was expecting bonds to hold up somewhere around 154 155 area but I think we're overextended this tends to show that the markets believe 
the uh, the the U.S. economy is not as strong as people believe, and it's more in a uh, deflationary environment instead of an inflationary one. Instead of, and they don't they don't believe the Feds are going to raise rates as soon as they are, or have have stated. So let's watch this and see. I think longer term bonds will go down, but near term, meaning over the next 60 days. We, you know, bonds will probably stay higher than most people believe. I think when the Feds raise their rates 25 basis points, bonds, yeah, it's going to pull down one or two points. may go down three or four points, but I do believe it's going to stay up a little bit higher longer than people think. But this has confounded a lot of people that trade bonds because we had a really strong resistance point here that we just had trouble, and then we did this dip, and then boom, we took it out like that. So, you know, if we were to come in and try and – uh, zero in on where we are, even on a tighter time frame. And let's say we look at the the two hour time frame, right? And then I just have my system project a of normal Fibonacci extension off of this. It would call for right at that level, which is where we're going to run into resistance, 159.16. Okay, so I'm going to put my I'm I'm uh, still playing this. Uh, bond market and I'm going to be more short than I am long but you can see this big move up here now the other thing is if we get up into this area right here okay and it just it keeps going up like this the MACD will finally give us one of these things like that and then cross and then if it does that it is almost zero bearish divergence ideally uh, the bearish divergence, the MACD would be somewhere down in this level here, giving us a good divergence signal, meaning we're going to get a pretty good little pullback. But without this bearish divergence on here, I think any pullback is going to be relatively minor, and, and you, you'll probably see some buyers, strangely enough, step into the bond market. So we have to be careful over the next 60 days. Um, now, everything can change as it always does. we got to follow it day to day. But the bond market has been very interesting. Meanwhile, in the currencies, the dollar's been up stronger. Today, it was down a little bit. You can see all this wide fluctuation here on this two-hour chart with the dollar when the uh, employment numbers came out. And the, the dollar ended up down off of the opening price just by 23 cents. But really didn't go anywhere. Much ado about nothing, really. Um, the dollar seems to indicate that, well, yeah, maybe the bond market is right. Maybe they're not going to raise the rates until maybe December or until next year. And even if they do raise them 25 basis points, which I need to remind you, we've had zero interest rate for a long, what, about six or seven years? Um, that's insane. Uh, and then if they do raise them just, what, 25 basis points, a quarter of a point? then the, the, the markets, both the U.S. dollar and bond market, seems to indicate, well, yeah, if they do that, they're still going to leave them down for quite some period of time. So it'll be a slow, steady rise uh, because there is just no inflation in the market right now. You've got this huge capitulation uh, commodities helped by a stronger dollar, but just because commodities, uh, China's getting whacked pretty good. They're a big buyer of commodities from ags to metals to minerals. Um, so it's put a damper on a lot of the commodities, which is also, and with oil down, uh, it's put a damper on a number of different uh, futures markets uh, in the commodity space. And you're seeing that's really holding down and keeping inflation in check also. So I think the feds are between a rock and a hard place. Now, there are a lot of other things that we're looking at and things that we've been trading uh, from oil to uh, the corn market, agricultural, uh, the beans, a uh, number of things there. Also in the currencies in addition to the dollar uh, and in the silver and the gold market. So if you're missing out on a lot of this action this year, then um, I highly encourage you to come on in and sign up with our group. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this uh, update. Uh, and I will, uh, you, you'll hear from me again next uh, weekend. For our members, I'll see you tomorrow night. Uh, for our weekly uh, market um, update um, for uh, the upcoming week. Have a great uh, weekend, everybody. Enjoy it, and uh, I will uh, see our members tomorrow night. Bye now.